Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and tonight we're talking to Jonathan Evison, author of West of Here. We sat down at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park and discussed literature, history, and the importance of writers helping other writers. Enjoy. With every book, I really want to push myself out of my comfort zone. I mean, I want to use every tool in my belt and a few, more than a few, that I don't even have. I want to develop those tools. Uh, and, and the analogy I often use is if I'm not, if I'm not doing that, if I'm not pushing myself towards that kind of discovery and, and, and having to figure it out as I go, well, then it's like playing in the fourth quarter of a blowout for me. I just feel like I'm going through the motions. So, I mean, I couldn't write another coming of, coming of age voice novel after Lulu. I knew I wanted to write something that was going to really push me. I knew that I had range beyond what Lulu was. I had written, you know, six novels before that nobody published, but, you know, I learned a few things along the way. I think that readers are, are going to be surprised at the range, but I wasn't surprised. I knew I could do it. It was hard. I mean, there were mornings where, like, you know, but they say hard, hard writing makes easy reading. It's true. I mean, like, exposition is the hardest thing to write. You give me two characters that have something at stake and put them in a room, and I'll give you six pages of dialogue in about a half hour. But, you know, to, to write description, as you know, when you sit down, I mean, that, it, to really slow yourself down and really sink in, that's hard. There came a point where I was so familiar with the material that it was like a, I felt like a quarterback who had grown six inches and all of a sudden I could see the playing field like never before, something I never experienced as a writer, and all of a sudden it became really easy. I was even able to go back and add characters, even though they were connected to all the other characters because I could immediately see how everybody would be affected because there was so much connective tissue that... Uh, so half of writing that book was uh, total, totally frustrating and maddening and half of it was totally exhilarating. I'm not a sentence writer. I, I use like musical analogies, like uh, like I, I want my prose to sort of swing, like 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 Louis Armstrong or, or Count Basie. I want the I look at the languages, and obviously it's very important. And I'm proud of some of my sentences. I mean, I think I'm good with words, but for me, they're there to serve the story. They're like the blood running through the veins of the story. And 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 if they stick out, I don't want to wow them with a sentence. I mean, it happens sometimes, but I don't want the reader to stop and say, I want to admire this sentence. This is perfect. I mean, I've had that sensation with books, sentences, and it's a beautiful thing in a way. It's just not, not what I want to do. I don't want, my, I don't want my reader to ever come up for air. I, 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 don't, I want the author to die. I want the author to be completely invisible. I want, them to, I want my story to feel lived. Um, and so I, ha I need to try to make myself go away as much as possible. You know, Hemingway used the old... Uh, glacier analogy where all the work was below the and, and I to a large degree agree with that from the conception of the novel I knew I wanted to write a novel about history not a historical novel but a novel about history and I knew that I instead of using the sort of wide-angle lens that we usually use to historicize material I wanted to use a kaleidoscope of limited points of view connecting and overlapping and bouncing off each other and spinning and so Though I did read a lot of th sort of third-person, wide-angle historical tech, where I really wound up with the research was very specific, like really seeking out personal narratives and personal accounts. And, and you find them in the dusty corners of libraries everywhere, little tape-bound documents that are 15 pages long. Sometimes they're 100 pages long. Sometimes it's just like a pioneer woman talking about life on the Washington frontier. Sometimes it's a family genealogy, but it's it's always uh, offers you a smaller aperture so that it feels a little more lived than just uh, talk about documents and, and sweeping over years and, and you know, uh, as, as a, the sort of wide-angle historical lens often does. This just made it, I, I just wanted it to be in the mud, in the rain, in the, in the, in the, in the struggle. I love books. You know, I love book culture. I love this business we're in. I love publishing because it's, it's, it's one of the few industries that's still about relationships. It's very quaint, and I love it. And I feel like I've got this stump or this platform now. Before I do anything for myself every day, I try to do something else for another writer. You know, I try to connect a writer with, who's looking for an agent with a potential agent, or I try to, uh, you know, I blurb a lot of books. I, um, I blog a lot of books. I give a lot of advice. I just... This is the most exciting thing for me. What I wanted to do my whole life was to write great books. What I wanted my whole life wasn't, I was never chasing a New York Times bestsellers list. I was never, I mean, of course, there's, you know, the whole thing is an act of conceit. 
You know what I mean? Yes, in the back of my brain, of course, I wanted to be a literary giant or whatever, but really, the 20 years of struggling and bearing novels was amazing. I mean, I wouldn't trade any of it. It was, I, I loved it. Like I said, the rejections, even those, m minor annoyances. I'm just happy to have the work. And so now that I, you know, what I'm going to try to do while, while the iron is hot for me, and who knows how long that will last, is just try to uh, s spread the love, you know what I mean? Because I, I think a few people positioned well can really do a lot to help, like, make a, a better ecology in publishing.